So in this video, I want to show you how you can work with Vary Audio. Vary Audio is a tool in Cubase that allows you to control and change or correct pitch of monophonic audio material. That can be very helpful if you're recording vocals. For that, the program works pretty good in my experience. It can also help you for monophonic instruments. There it depends which instrument you want to tune and how it is played or recorded. It doesn't work for polyphonic instruments. So if you're playing chords on the piano or a guitar or another instrument, that won't work. Very Audio is really easy to use. You just go to the event that you want to use Very Audio on. You double click it and you see this window popping up. Probably like this. If you don't see your left part, you gotta open it up here. And if you did so, there is different tabs here in the left zone. And the one you want to use is obviously called Very Audio. So if you open up audio material with your sample editor, you can see the waveform of the event that you selected. If you open up Very Audio, and click this button here, your computer will analyze the material and show you this colored segments, which will represent a optical version of the pitch of the material that you just opened. So what you can see right now here in red color so all these that now change the color are the notes that Cubase found in your audio file. So now basically you select an event and if you do so, you can change the pitch of this event, the length, you can straighten the curve of the audio material and you can even change the duration, so not just where it starts, if it's good in time, but also if it's too long, then you can like warp it and produce a to some degree longer or shorter note. You could work with very audio like it is common in modern pop or dance productions so that the pitch of your material, of your vocal material, would sound kind of artificial and you could change the volume of single notes easily as well or let your computer produce a MIDI file of the material it just analyzed. So I think it's really easy to work with very audio. At first I want to show some information about the buttons and the functions and then I want to show you how you can work with very audio so that it will sound natural or if you don't want that even artificial. So like I said you've got to open the left zone and if you did that you click on the button in the right top corner, which will analyze all your audio material in this event. So now you will see these colored events here. And the first thing you probably want to do if you work with a very audio is to check the color scheme. The color scheme for very audio has four different modes. The first one is the auto mode, which will just show for one track all the segments here in one color. The second mode is the event mode and it will show the segments of your analyzed track in the color 
of your event. So let's say you have a track here and there's more than one event on it. You could obviously change the color of your event. And if you open them, you see now it's kind of bluish and here it gets a purple color. So it's basically the same colors as my events here. The third option is the pitch option. So every segment gets another color corresponding to the pitch. So you see this one is a B, this as well, and this as well, and they all got the same color. The same as this one here or this, these in green are all C sharps. And the last option is the chord track option. So if you've got a chord track in your project, which I don't, it will show information corresponding to your chord track. So under your chord track, you can put in chords, obviously, but you can also put in key and scale information. So very audio will compare all your pitch information from here to the scale or chord or a key that you put in in your chord track and will show you if the notes in here fit within the chord or the scale. If you zoom in, on your very audio segment, you can of course do so by using the buttons here or your shortcuts or in your sample or key editor, if you hover over your keyboard, you can see your mouse changes. And if you then click and drag, you can widen or shorten the width of your segment. So if you zoom in, you can see there is like this green part here, but inside this green part, you can still see a white line. And this curve shows what Cubase thinks that happened in this one note. So the green one is one note and the white line is what happened to the pitch of the note. So with most instruments and vocal, you can see it's not constant. If this is not a synth or any artificial tone, then your line will probably look like this because you're not capable of doing a perfect pitch with your vocal cord. So that means that you can see here if your tone maybe started like this with a little pitchy part or if it has, for example, a part where Cubase will show nothing or if it goes straight up in the end, that all means that you maybe could or have to work on this part that I will show later. A pause means basically that there was material that Cubase thought is not with a pitch. So for example, if you breathe or if you pronounce an S or T, then there will maybe not be a lot of tonal information in that sound. So Cubase just shows a pause in your line. Sometimes you can see like here, there isn't even a colored event that you have to think over yourself. If you need that part colored, you should include it into your node and I will show later how that works. So if you use the buttons here for very audio, this will work on the one you selected. You can even select more than one and use the buttons over here and then the changes will be applied to all the selected nodes. So at first you've got your button for analyzing the audio material and then you've got the button for the smart controls. 
The smart controls are basically the same buttons as over here, but they will be shown in this window in a shortcut form. So you see right now, there's four smart controls because I've activated standard. If you say show all of them, there will appear new buttons and you will have more options. If you want to know how smart controls work, then check out the video I made about smart controls. The next field is about the pitch snap mode. We have three options here. Off is obviously you don't have a snap mode at all. You can just change the pitch constantly. If you use absolute, your note will snap to the absolute pitch that is in our case half steps. And if you have a note that is slightly out of tune like this, and you can see it compared to your keyboard over here or to the lines you can see here in your project window. So there's brighter and darker lines and the color of your event is basically the same width than this line. And if you see that it doesn't fit exactly in the line, that means probably that your note is somehow out of tune. So now you can see my note is out of tune. It's higher than the perfect note would be. If you use the relative snap mode, then Cubase will constantly use the same difference to the pitch than the original one. So here we have a slight out of tune pitch. And if I change to a half step above or below, then it will keep this difference from the pitch. With this button here, you can change the pitches of your audio material by using a MIDI keyboard. So right now, I don't have a MIDI keyboard on my computer, but I will just show it using the virtual keyboard of Cubase. So if I activate this button over here and I select an event, you can see I can change the pitch of this note by pressing a button on my keyboard. And if I press the note B, the selected segment will go to the note B. If I make it a C, it will obviously go to a C or a D or a E and so on. So that can be helpful if you're working on a long project with a lot of notes and you already know what the notes should be like, then you can probably use the MIDI input for correcting your notes really comfortable on your MIDI keyboard. The next sliders will give you different functions, which are basically the most important in very audio. These are quantize the pitch, straighten the curve, change the formants and changing the volume of your note. That works really easy. You just use the slider and drag it to the left and right and you can see immediately the changes over here in your project window. The last button over here says show a reference track. 
For that, I produced a MIDI track and called it Vocal Reference. And now if I click on it, you can see other notes appearing here in very audio. If I have a MIDI track that shows me perfectly which notes my singer should sing, I can just show them here and compare my track to these perfect notes. So you see my vocal parts are these in a lighter blue and the MIDI notes are the ones above which are tinier and in a darker blue. So basically now I have a C sharp here, but my MIDI reference is on an F. That means I could either change this note to be the perfect pitch here for F, or I have a second or third voice for a choir harmony and I want to show the lead vocals and compare my track to the lead vocal pitch. And the last one is not a real button, it is a menu with a tiny drop down button and here you can do different things that will affect your very audio like the one I just showed. When I did apply changes you can undo the changes of very audio here or start a new analyzation or in the end, if you did a lot of work with very audio, then you can say, render these changes that I made into my audio material. Another thing which is really cool is the find out the MIDI parts or produce MIDI notes out of my audio track. So if you have an audio track, very audio analyzes it and shows these different notes. If you now say, show me these notes in a MIDI track, very audio will produce a MIDI track where all the pitches and the length of the notes are basically exact the same than in your vocal part. So you could, for example, produce a MIDI part, route it to a instrument and double your vocals with a different sound.